Welcome to a brief introduction to my Blend Phonics lesson and stories. And I thought you might like to see me. There's a picture of myself. And this is teaching a Blend Phonics lesson. Uh, I prefer cursive, but you can use it. This is where I was teaching the long vowels in Blend Phonics. And the book, the lesson and stories, are designed to go with Blend Phonics, which is now available in a book or in this free uh, version uh, right here. So let's get rid of that picture, which we don't need anymore. And this is a cover of my book, or it's the current cover. I may uh, get a graphic designer to change that cover. It's a generic cover from CreateSpace, but nevertheless, I kind of like it because it shows reading as a path and a great adventure. And this is a path to reading success and all the adventure that comes from learning to read. It's called Blend Phonics Lesson and Stories. It's based on Hazel Loring's 1980 Blend Phonics technique, which is a spatial technique for teaching reading with uh, directional guidance. Now that you know what the cover looks like, so you can order a copy, uh, let's take a look at the book. I'm going to be going through the brief cop, uh, um, the uh, what do you call it? Uh, proof copy here and let me let me uh, I guess it's all right we'll go with that so there is uh, a complete reading program for all ages and copyright 2015 dedicated to Hazel Loring pressing on here's the contents now there are six steps that we're going to go through and this tells you the units the stories and the pages so if you're teaching blend phonics along with this you'll be able to uh, follow this exactly okay acknowledgments you can read that people that have helped me along the way and encouraged me and now we're going to start with step one this is short vowels and single letter consonants units one through five stories one through seven uh, before we get started here uh, um, this is how the blend phonics concept works we first teach the uh, one letter and a sound associated with it such as the B B and then we add the a a and we have ba then and not until then we add the T bat Notice we don't teach at, hat, fat, cat, mat, pat. That will encourage kids to look at the end of the word. That's, it's good to teach that later when we're working on spelling patterns. But right now we're trying to teach basic sounding out. And we want to emphasize directional guidance. It's also called sequential or cumulative uh, phonics. Okay. Now... turning the page again okay these over here we have the phonovisual charts by the way you can teach blend phonics without the charts I have taught it without the charts but I really like to use the charts and I give these to my students when I give them their book I give them these charts and I teach them how to tap it and I have a couple videos available on the charts explaining how I use them right now I put those over there because I'm going to show how the charts correlate with the lessons this first story right here unit one has every consonant every consonant um, in English and over here we have the consonant chart that teaches all of the consonants and the columns are color coded and there's flashcards also that go with this um, that I like to use are color coded the the yellow uh, uh, sounds here uh, phonemes are the unvoiced consonants in other words the voice is not used we tell the children these are whisper consonants and we start the chart is linguistically organized logically scientifically organized going from the front of the mouth to the back of the mouth and the pink column are 
the voice consonants, and notice these are related. Uh, the point of articulation is going to be the same, and the only thing that changes is the voice until so you have p, b, and so on down the chart. And that's a valentine, by the way. We use the word this instead of a picture because there's not too many words that start out with a voiced th sound. Uh, the letters underneath, such as the PH and the C and the S, and uh, down here we have a C under the K, those are called secondary spellings. The green column are nasal sounds, comes out your nose, the m, n, and n. And then these are called the other consonants. And it's interesting to notice that they're actually related. For example, the T, if you take it across, you have the T, D, N, L. Those are all what we call alveolars. And so they're, the, the consonants are related as you go across by point of articulation. Okay, so in the first lesson, you use all the consonants except uh, the SH and the CH. Those are digraphs, so I should say single letter consonants. Uh, the QU and the CK. And only one vowel, and that is the short A. And by the way, these are the long vowels on the top. A, E, I, O, U. That's a rose, and that's a mule. So cake, fi uh, tree, five, rose, mule. By the way, this is this is a training uh, this is a training tape for adults. I expect you to, to be able to understand this without the, uh, taking the time I would if I was changing, teaching it to a child. Then we have the short vowels: a, 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 cat, bed, fish, top, duck, and then below are called the other vowels sounds. So we have the a of saw, the r of car, and so on, and the spelling underneath are called secondary spellings, so like O-W and O-U, O-Y and O-I, and so on. Up here, the A, we have A-Y, A-I, etc. Okay, so what you're going to do, you're going to teach the kids to sound out these words. I have them uh, write, uh, sound them out, write them in a journal, teach it from the chalkboard. Then you have them read this little simple story right here, which uses only the short A sound. And we have four comprehension, because we're teaching comprehension. By the way, when you teach the words, uh, Miss Loring always would have the children make up a sentence to go with the words. So we never neglect meaning when we're teaching phonics. Uh, and so our students never become mere word callers. But, but, so we're associating the sight, the sound. We have them write it, so we're, they're writing. So it's all multi-sensory. Then we have four questions, so as they read the story, they have to be thinking about what they're reading. And then we have spelling words at the end, and when you're starting out, uh, you can actually have them look at the word and spell it. Like, say, spell bat, and they're going to say B-A-T. And yes, we use letter names and letter sounds right from the start. Hazel Loring did, and that's the way I teach it. Have them spell them orally. You can also have them spell the words uh, in writing, I do not see how you can teach spelling without letter names. I know programs that attempt to do that, and it has never made any sense to me. Okay, and I, I prefer that the students going into Blend Phonics already know their letter names. Not totally necessary, but it makes it, things go a lot easier. All right, now we got the 10 cans, so this is going to be all the consonant sounds, and now we got the I of fish. And we're going to move along here very quickly with the rest of this video. Next we have the mop, and we're going to use ah of top. So all you have is all your consonant sounds. Notice there's a huge amount of review because every time they read a new word, they're reviewing the consonants that they've already learned. So there's constant reinforcement. I have the kids read this to me at school. Then I send it home and have them read it with the parents or another teacher or a peer, a good student that's a good reader can also do that. And again, we have a story comprehension question. Now, there's 62 of these. Next is the bug. And again, we're going to use the uh of duck right here. And then they can sound out those words. By the way, I like to give them the charts the first time they come. Actually, when they come for the test, I give them the charts, which you can order very inexpensively from the Frontal Visual Company. And then I want them to do these charts every day. So even though we haven't, don't get to the aw sound maybe for weeks from now, 
I want them practicing that sound every day so when they get to it they've already got a good idea of what it is and that makes everything really accelerates the learning. Next we have story five, unit five, the wet hand and here we're going to introduce the short E of eh. Next we have story six, unit five, OSC. Unit five review, okay so we've actually introduced all of the short vowel sounds so this is simply a review nothing new and by the way the words are are lined out in where the shape is the same and this is especially good for children that may have dyslexia pressing on uh, Fox another review lesson now we're going to consonant blends and consonant digraphs and here we have one more step up in difficulty so as we go through the program it is a sequential phonics multi-sensory and it's cumulative the learning is cumulative so here we have the word band so at the end of each one of these words we now have uh, two consonants and also we have a CK uh, we have two consonants that they will sound out. No new sounds, nothing new to learn over here. Just a new skill that they need to work on. And again, I have them write these words as we do with a chalkboard lesson. Now we have sink the ship. This is our first consonant digraph. And that is the SH of ship. The next uh, unit 10, we have the thump. And this, we have the TH that's voiced and the TH is not voiced. So we have the th and the th as we have over here and we're teaching them in the sequence of th, this, th, and th, three, th. And again, the students have already studied this for several days before we get to the lesson. Now we have the CK of chick and that's cherry and we have the whisk. We're up here with the W W H. I know that sounds dropping out in a lot of American English, but I prefer to teach it uh, when we teach the W H. It because it helps with spelling. Now we have the N G, and that is the swing over here. That's story 13, 14. We have the tank, and the phonovisual method includes that. It's N and N K, and again, it's at the end. Pressing on. Uh, the next two lessons, there's no new sounds. These are beginning consonant blends, ex uh, excluding the R blend. Then unit 14, these are all R blends, like B, R, uh, C, R, D, R, and so on. Have the students uh, sound out those words, read the stories, answer the questions. Yum and yuck, here there's no new sounds, uh, but these are two-syllable words and the students love these they say wow i'm going to read those big words and they get real excited and uh, this helps them to look through the words applying their skills with ever increasing uh, complexity handstands this is another of the um, uh, compound words now we go to step three this is the long vowels vce is vowel consonant uh, silent E. We also have the long O endings uh, and long I, uh, uh, old oast, old, old oath, the long I and ild and eind, and short words with long final, uh, long final vowel. So let's take a look at this. Um, here we learn how to transform the words and um, we have cap and cape. So you have the students first sound out cap then you show them how when you add an E to the end of it, you have A as in cape and so on. Uh, now that takes us over to the long vowels that we have up here. And now we're going to practice all of that in stories. So we have, this is where it really reinforces it. Um, they're going to read all these words applying the Notice that the space there represents a line. You can teach the E as a silent E, or you can just teach this as a, um, a unit. A, E, it says A, and then you put a constant there like 8. Okay, the kite, we're going to do the, the, the second one is the I sound. 
excuse me, the E sound and the I sound. And by the way, there aren't very many words that have E consonant. E, we just list three of them here. So this is basically the kite pressing on. Pine cones, this is the long O that we have over here. By the way, I broke my wrist recently and I'm having to operate the mouse with my left hand. It's a little frustrating. It won't be quite as smooth as it as I would like. And then we have the rude dude. That will be the U. So you show the students the rude dude and the chart that they've been working on now for several days and how to use that to read the words, the story, and spell the words and so on. Next we have the cold, and this is going to be the long O, so this will be rows. And unit 27 is also the long O of rows, and you can see that it has the O, o at the end of a, of a word there. We'll study some more O's later on in a later unit. Now we go to step four. As we go up the ladder to learning how to read well, this is our controlled vowels, units 19 through 21, stories 28 through 31. So we have the car, which is going to be the car over here. And you can even show them the word and say, hey, can you find the, can you find the picture that, and the spelling that goes with that? And they'll be able to read that right off the bat as they become excellent spellers. And by the way, by this time, a lot of them have been working on that chart so long that when they start looking at uh, stories, they just start seeing the, the uh, spellings even before we get to them in the, in the, in the book. But we use the lesson and stories because this is a fail-proof method that the students go through step by step. The students that learn to read on their own, well, they don't hardly need instruction. But the students that need instruction or might develop dyslexia uh, need this careful uh, training. Okay, now we have morning on the farm, and that's going to be the O-R of fork down here. And the next one, uh, st uh, story 30 is unit 21, and here we have the E-R-U-R, -R, that's the ER of fur, and there's going to be one more lesson on the ER of fur, and these are longer words like camper, cutter, so on. Now that takes us to step 5, and this is about digraphs and diphthongs, and if you wonder what the difference is, a digraph is two letters like a vowel team, they're sometimes called, that go together to make one sound. And a diphthong is two that go together that make two sounds together. And we'll notice the difference here as we go through. Um, now we have a fine day, and this is going to be the, uh, um, the AI over here of... Uh, down at the bottom, notice it has A-Y and A-I, and you can tell your students that A-I is used inside a word and A-Y at the end of a word, and curiously, you cannot use a dotted letter, an I or a J, at the end of a word, or a V or a U. Okay, the B, that'll be the double E over here of tree. The C is going to be the uh, same one, but it's going to be the double E, and it'll be down here at the bottom. It has E-A. EA has three sounds, and we'll be studying all of them in different stories. And in Miss um, Loring put them all in the same unit, so notice it's unit 24. The next one is also unit 24. And here we have um, EA that says uh, eh, that's right here, and EA that says a, which is up, uh, up here. Now we're going to do... Unit 26, story 36, and we have IE. This is going to be long I as in pi. And notice if you took out that little line, you have IE. So that makes it pretty easy for them. And uh, the kids are going to love these little stories, I promise you. Next is the chief priest. And here IE has the E, long E sound. And it's actually going to be the E right here. Uh, sunny day. Now here you have a choice. Um, most people think this is the E sound, and so it would be the E of tree. Notice the phonovisual puts a Y, a line with a Y after it. And they view this as a short Y, as in army. And uh, technically, it probably is the short Y sound. Either one you choose won't make any difference. The kids will get it. And linguist dictionaries even have differences there. 
Miss Lori noted that in her pamphlet. Okay, now we got the fly. So now we're down here with the the uh, where we at here? Long I, and uh, there's a dash with a Y up here. So that's five. Next is goat and toad, unit 40. And uh, this takes us over to rows. And notice we have an OA down here at the bottom. And we also actually have an OE if we delete that little line right there. So you see how that correlates with the phonovisual chart. Next, we have the fish bowl. And here, OW has the O sound right there, and it's included. Notice OW can also be OW, and that will be the next lesson that's kind of why we paired these together so the kids can see the difference and they generally don't have any trouble with this so you have the ow that has the owl sound pressing on uh again ou of mouse and again this is the ou at the bottom under the cow and the ow and then it, there's a few other sounds for this ou and they're listed you country young and soul just tell them those words Next, we have OY and OI, and here's OY and OY of boy over here in the phonovisual chart. And uh, notice we use OY generally at the end of a word, unless it's plural or a word like oyster. And then OI always inside a word because you can't use a dotted letter at the end of a word. Now we have the double O, the loose stoop. So here we have O of stoop which is going to be the oo of moon, and we call that the long double O. And then we have the U uh of book, and we have a book right down here. So it's the U uh sound, oo, U. Uh. And this might look complicated, but children rarely have any real problem with this, at least that's my experience. Now we have ah uh, and of uh, dawn and AU, and that will be the saw over here. And then we have all of ball, and again, the A-L-L -L under A-W. So these are the same sound, different spellings. And so, and then, of course, you have your spelling words down at the bottom. It's going to be a huge help to your students learning to be good spellers. Students that finish this book usually become awesome spellers and uh, way ahead of most of their peers using other methods. Next, we have uh, oo of stew, and this takes us over here with the mule. You can see the EW underneath the mule. Now we got uh, step six. Okay, we're almost done. This is our last step. These are called advanced spelling patterns. And here we go. We have a sleep, and here we have the unaccented A making the a uh sound like duck. And again, uh, the Spelling don't help, but you can explain to kids that this is a sound and it's written with an A. Um, next, we have the bush, uh, and we've already presented the sh short double O sound, and you see the U underneath there. The circus, here we have the S that's you, um, excuse me, C that is you that has the S sound because it has an E, I, or a Y after it, and that is the saw picture with a C underneath of it over here. So that is the circus. Next we have the stage, and here we have the G that has the um, J sound, and if you look in our little, at the phonovisual chart where it has a jar underneath the J, there's a G, that's the CH sound. And that it always has an E, I, or Y after it. But with G, some words uh, don't follow that pattern. So it's a little trickier than the C. Now we have the flight. And here we have the I, G, H. Loring teaches this as the silent G, H, which is fine. But we have I, G, H. And if you look over here, the phonovisual chart has an I, G, H under the 5. And the kids pick it up really, really good. The G, H can also have the, uh, well, you have taught. Here the GH is silent, too. Uh, the F, the GH can have the F sound. And actually, on my chart, I've written a little GH. or No, I stuck it on there with a little piece of paper my wall chart so kids can see it. And then just teach them laughing enough. We're getting silent. GH. Pressing on. Ah, Story 55, Unit 41, these are silent letters. So there's no new letters, no new sounds 
or even spellings on the phonovisual chart. Notice that we have the silent K, the silent T in Chasen, silent R in Wreath, uh, and even in Answer and Sword you have silent W. Comb, the B silent at the end, Det, um, the L and Calf, and then Honor uh, these words. And then you have a little story that practice them. Next is 56, unit 42. This is cheese, please. And um, this is the S that has the Z sound. Z. And if you look over here, see the Z? There's an S underneath of it. So this is where you go with, with that. Almost done here. The uh, the elephant, story 54, this is unit 43, and here we introduce the pH here of the uh, of fan, okay? You can see it right there. My mission, here we have uh, the word battle, the E silent. Some would say that's a Chihuahua sound uh, before the L, but anyway, uh, uh, tell the students that it's silent, they won't have any trouble with it, but they need to learn to read and spell these words. And then you have the T-I-O-N and the S-I-O-N, which say shun, and that is actually the S-H. Um, the phonovisual charts were really designed for younger students, and they didn't feel like it was necessary to include this spelling pattern. And on my wall chart, I actually have a little piece of paper stuck underneath there with the S I or um, TI and the SI on it so the kids can see that. But all you got to do is just tell them that it's another way to do the SH sound. And next, this is called, uh, this story is almost finished, and this is the ED. And um, for you teachers, the explanation is that ED, when it has a D or a T in front of it, is going to say ED. And when it has a voice consonant, like a mm, it's going to be voiced like a D. And if it has a unvoiced, like the k, k, it's going to be unvoiced like the T. You don't have to explain all that to the students. Uh, mainly just have them read the words. You kind of have to help them a little bit. Maybe read the first or second word to show them how it goes. The last, well, uh, unit 46 this is basically going to be all of the long vowels, A, E, I, O, U, but these are long vowels in what we in open syllables. An open syllable is a syllable at at uh, is a uh, an open syllable is a syllable that has a vowel at the end of the syllable. And accented open syllables are almost always long. So the A in Baker, Racer, Shady, Lady is because it's two different syllables. And when you're teaching this, you can write it on the board and draw a line through it um, uh, between the syllables to show them. And it's a very productive and important um, pattern. Then we have oval, grocery, or grocer, grocery, oral, and so on. And again, explain the meaning of these words to the students as you teach them and then have them read the story. Uh, and this is the end, actually, of our almost the end here. The giant ruin. Uh, is another one where that we simply uh, uh, have two syllables or vowel at the end of a syllable, open syllables. And then buried treasure, there were only 37 Dolch list words that were not included in the original or in the blend phonics. And so I have added those 37 words here and I actually put them in a group like ooh, do, to, today, together, so on. And read these with the students. By now, they probably know these words, but if they don't, you can explain it. And, that, and thus, you can see that the students, when they finish this, first grade students, even kindergarten students, will know all the Deutsch list words by the time they finish this without having done any whole word memorization. And then I've added three words with the ZH sound. And by the way, on the chart over here, Right here, but after uh, to the right of the sh is where the zh would be. And um, since there's not very many words, they didn't encumber the chart with it, you know. But I suppose you could draw a picture of a television and put it in there and and say that it's the 
television je sound and that is, there's our little story and the end of it um, and that is our training video I'm going to click the pages just to show you what you're getting this is a tapping exercise I like this st if students come to you not knowing the alphabet they can learn it in a week or two even the youngest students the ones that thought they never could learn it can learn it with this you have them go a tap and say a b c d e f g tapping all the way down each letter and then when they get good at it then you go down the column a e h l go up the column w t q go backwards p o n m l and then at random and they will know the alphabet in no time at all uh, this is uh, some key words i'm not going to read those you can read them that will help you understand what the sounds are um, then this is what I just went through with you actually the phonovisual chart correlation this tells you when to teach each one of these squares or sounds or spelling patterns and then just for sample I put the white in here and a little explanation of it uh, that you can have and then this is from her book why teach blend phonics and this goes in I'm gonna go real quick it just simply shows how to do it uh, this is why I call it decoding ladder and it just simply shows the steps and the units and the skills that are being taught and then over here you have the story that practices that as you can see everything set out very very logically step by step it's a foolproof method that works with every student from kindergarten through adult and this is the I call this table of contents here it's actually the scope and sequence you can see on these two pages at a glance what's taught with each uh, unit and the progress charts really important if uh, if you don't want to mark in your book and you want to use your book with other students you can make a copy of this and put in a student's uh, plastic uh, bag where I, where I use a plastic bag to send stuff home and then when they have mastered a section you put the date in there and the kids love this you can send it home with the parents and the parents then can put a check mark to show that they have uh, read it by the way reading it once in class with you is not enough they need to read those stories with their parents or with somebody else at home that reinforcement is very important and there's some interesting information on fluent performance uh, the importance of spelling and uh, Isabel Beck a real phonics guru has written a, a great book on uh, uh, called making sense of phonics and she uses a technique that is uh, exactly the same as the technique that we use here I, I use it with writing she uses cards her book is a very valuable book to have and um, it, I believe that that she explains why this method is so important. I doubt she's heard of this book, or maybe not. I don't know, or this of uh, Loring's method. But the two are obviously alike, and if you read the two books, you'll see it. And then we have I use Dr. George Gonzalez's eight comprehension skills, and that's a hidden thing. You won't know it unless you look at this but these are the eight skills five of them are literal and five of them are inferential and this is you might say embedded in the um, in the um, in the question and answers okay well that's it this is Don Potter and uh, this is by the way copyrighted by Don Potter but you're welcome to share it and use it uh, my website is www.donpotter.net and blendphonics.org. I hope you'll get my book. Use it. Contact me. Let it know how it goes. If you need any help, I will be glad to help you any way I can.